Hello everyone. So I know in my last video I said that I wouldn't be back for a few weeks, but I've decided to just make this video quickly because I really want to update you all on the new Western Sydney Airport. For those of you who haven't already, do check out my first video from earlier this year, which delves into the entire background behind Sydney's new airport. So there was a draw a few weeks back to win a chance to tour the new airport. And so, of course, I entered it. I didn't win, unfortunately, but lucky for me, Don won. The winners were allowed to invite someone to tag along with them. And luckily, Don's a fan of the channel, he knew I'd enjoy visiting the airport, and so he got in touch with me and he invited me. I'm sure he's watching right now, so once again, thank you so much for inviting me. I, I really appreciated it. Don's a Twitch streamer, actually, so do be sure to check out his channel when you have the time. I'll link it in the top right for you. Oh, on that note, I should probably also plug myself real quick. Shout out to my monthly Kofi supporters. Please do consider supporting me over on Kofi if you can. Also, please subscribe if you haven't already. And do consider checking out the rest of my channel, your go-to YouTube destination for all things city planning, after the video. Anyways, back to Don inviting me to tag along with him to the new airport. Don knew that if I was one of the visitors, I'd make an update video about the airport, and so, well, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Boy oh boy, the anticipation was really building in me in getting to actually go and see the new airport. I drove to the airport pretty early. Obviously, I'm sure you can probably guess, based on the content of this channel, that I'm very interested in this type of thing, I get very excited about it. I'm so excited for the new airport to open. And so, pretty much whenever I can, I love to drive past the new airport. I've driven past it so many times before. Keep in mind, I don't even live near it. Anyways, uh, let me just say that Elizabeth Drive, which is the main road to the airport, it's slowly becoming quite undrivable. Many of you probably already know that the Northern Road, which is one of the other roads to the site, has already been upgraded. It's a beautiful, easy four-lane divided road now. But Elizabeth Drive is still this low-quality two-lane road. It's far more semi-rural in quality than it really should be. I mean, it's carrying lots of industrial traffic every single day, lots of trucks, and obviously that's leading to traffic. Honestly, the M12 motorway, which will be a four-lane divided carriageway paralleling Elizabeth Drive, it could not come sooner enough. I can confirm that it has started construction. I saw a few construction sites and signs for the new motorway on my drive. Although, I should say I'm seriously disappointed that you won't actually be able to use the new M12 motorway unless you use the M7, and therefore you would need to pay its M7 toll. They've been claiming the M12 is toll free, but you have you have to use the toll. You have to pay the toll for the M7 to meaningfully use the M12. So it's not really toll free, and that that you know that disappoints me. I won't lie. Anyways, before I went to the new airport, I stopped on Ludnam Road and filled some pretty cool drone shots of the airport. And boy, even from afar, even in these shots, you can really get an idea of just how much progress they've made at the airport. As I said, I've been driving past it for years now, ever since 2020, and man, they've come so far. From pretty much just a pile of dirt to an actual runway and a visible terminal building. I don't know if it's clear yet, but I am so excited for this new airport to open. Alright, so it was time to head for the tour. I made my way to the Western Sydney Airport Experience Centre. By the way, you, you should check it out. It's open Sundays to Wednesdays to the public, and it offers great views of the airport construction site, as well as a good insight into the airport project. They have these TV screens and these information panels for the public to look at. Anyways, there I met Don, uh, as well as the other three competition winners, as well as some of the engineers behind the project. We all got on a bus and headed to the airport, and it was a 15 minute drive from the Experience Centre to the airport, on which we learnt a lot about the project from one of the engineers. Okay, so a little bit into the logistics behind a project of this massive scale. All the engineers we met that day work for a company called Multiplex. This is a company who is responsible for building the airport terminal. You also have the New South Wales government and Sydney Metro who are separately responsible for building the airport's metro. And then you also obviously have the Australian Air Traffic Authority who will decide the flight paths. 
There's no point asking anyone who works for Multiplex about the Metro or about the flight parts because they won't know much more than what we already know. Although, I'll admit that when I asked the team if they thought the Metro would actually be done by 2026 as the government has been planning, they were skeptical, which we already knew. So the first thing that really stands out to me on the drive to the airport is just how big the airport site is. Like, oh my god, it is such a long drive from the experience center to the airport. Truly, I don't think you can fathom just how big the airport site is until you get there. Trust me, 15 minutes from one side of the airport into the airport itself. That's so long. On the way, we briefly had some glimpses at the future airport business park, which is still, you know, just mostly dirt and construction, as well as the future airport terminal and airport business park metros. Speaking of dirt, they've moved a whopping amount of dirt. I couldn't find the exact number, they did tell me, but I've forgotten. But let's just say that the airport site was not flat when they got to it. They had to pretty much find a good average height and make the entire land all the same level, if that makes sense. In fact, they actually reused dirt from the North Connects and the West Connects projects, which, you know, that's obviously a very sustainable outcome, I would say. We also noticed all of these big lake-looking holes. They were created during the moving of dirt at the airport, and they will remain when the airport opens as water basins to catch water runoff. Okay, so we arrived in the construction site. Here we go. We scanned our QR codes to go through the turnstile into the site. This may seem like the silliest thing to be impressed by, but God, the worker accommodation is massive. Endless corridors of demountable buildings, the most I'd ever seen in one space. The workers even have their own on-site fast food, because the airport is still way too far a drive from any, any food anywhere else. You can't expect them to drive every time for lunch to eat. The blue on this map represents the new airport terminal, and it looks so small on this map, but it's actually massive. These photos really don't do the terminal justice, trust me on that one. This airport terminal is really big. It will have a floor space of 75,000 meters squared, the equivalent of a 50-store office building in Sydney CBD. For comparison, Terminal 3 at Kingsford Smith is currently only 78,000 meters squared. Right from the get-go, the airport will be well positioned to rival the old Sydney airport. Anyways, that segues me brilliantly onto my next point. I've actually already touched on why Sydney needs a new airport in my video earlier this year, but I really just want to hammer the point home right now. We've all heard news stories about how badly congested Sydney Airport is right now. It can barely handle all of the passengers eager to travel. This isn't just a post-pandemic rush. Sydney Airport needs to be supplemented by more, and that view was wholeheartedly cemented by not just the engineers, but by Don, who indeed actually works at Sydney Airport. One of Sydney Airport's biggest weaknesses is its curfew. Western Sydney Airport will not have a curfew, and that's a win. The team noted how flights would be able to take off at far more convenient times due to this. Right now, the curfew at Sydney Airport is 11pm to 6am, but without a curfew, you could take off at midnight in Sydney and arrive, for example, in Singapore at the crack of dawn, ready for your exciting holiday. Just timing-wise, it offers so much more flexibility when you don't have a curfew, and I think that that will be a massive highlight for this new airport. And then it was time for the most exciting part, time to enter the airport terminal building itself. We entered on the land side. I learned quite a bit of airport terminology on the day, I'll have to be honest. <laughs> land side means the side that passengers enter the airport from, while air side is the side that the runway and the planes are on. The side that you can't get to without a passport or going through border security and all that. Anyways, the airport has four levels. A basement level, a ground level, level two, and level three. Yes, there's no level one. It goes straight from ground to two. The engineers were just as confused as us on that one. Anyway, so we got into the terminal, and it's massive. Have I made that clear yet? I can't seem to find official plans for the terminal building's layout. I suspect they haven't been made public. We just have all these renders, we don't have actual plans. So I'll just be going based off my memory for this next part. 
We entered on the ground level where we checked out where the baggage drop off and the check in will go. The new airport is planning to be far more automated than Sydney Airport, which will allow passengers, for example, to actually track their baggage as it is moved onto and off the plane. Amazing! We moved on through the ground level into an area that won't ever actually be seen by the public. This is where baggage and stuff will go before being sent to the basement, as well as where offices will be. At least, that's just based off my memory, don't quote me on that. From there, we walked upstairs to level 2. These stairs aren't permanent, they're just construction stairs. Level 2 will be mainly where retail and duty free is located. You can see that it's just such a massive space for this, and I'm fully confident that the retail in this airport will be absolutely amazing because of it. Something the engineers really reaffirmed with us was that the airport is not looking to be just a place where people go to travel. It's looking to be a destination in itself. Kind of like Singapore's Changi Airport. For example, it has the Jewel, which, you know, that attracts so many visitors a year. Will our new airport actually be able to do this? I'll be honest, I doubt it. At least not immediate. Maybe in a decade or two, though. Uh, anyways, we got to see a lot of the work that the construction workers are going through. They were, for example, they were li laying new concrete down on level two when we were there. Level 3 doesn't exist at the airport yet, or at least not substantially, but it will be home to a lot of the uh, back of house operations, like offices. Oh, and it will also be home to the first class lounges. Ooh la la. We got an excellent view of the new runway from level 2, which is the view that passengers will get too. So pretty much the entire walk we'd done up until this point was what passengers will be doing as well. We also got a good view of where the elevator shaft and the elevator stairs, elevator stairs, what am I saying? The stairs in general will lie in this just massive big block thingy. From there, it was time to head down the elevator, a construction elevator, not a permanent elevator. It was time to go to the basement. Now, the basement will be where baggage is sent to be handled. As I implied earlier, it will be fully automated all the way up until being loaded onto the plane. And I think that's pretty impressive, honestly. No one in the public will ever be actually allowed to go into the basement, so I think it was pretty cool that we were granted this rare opportunity. On that note, we were some of the first public to actually ever get to go and see the new airport, which, again, how amazing is that? The basement isn't fully closed up yet. You can still, like, you can, it's still getting air from outside. Uh, for reasons that flew over my head, I don't actually know why they haven't closed it up yet. I think the vehicles, uh, some vehicles still need access to it or something like that. From there, we walked through the ground level of the airport again from the land side, getting another amazing view of the terminal. We then arrived on the air side of the terminal, on the apron, very near to the runway. The Western Sydney Airport runway is designed to allow for a much faster turnover between flights than Kingsford Smith. Right now, from gate to takeoff, it's an average of about 17 minutes at Kingsford Smith. Western Sydney Airport is aiming for this to only be 5 minutes. This is due to its rapid exit taxiways. Stage 1 only calls for one runway, allowing the airport to handle 10 million passengers a year. But this will only grow. The airport will add a second runway at some point, and it could be able to handle 82 million passengers a year by 2063. Anyways, back to the apron. The apron is where the planes will sit, allowing passengers to get on and fly to their destination. There will be 14 gates at the new airport initially. What I was about to say is completely wrong, so I'm just editing this in post. There will be seven piers with two aero bridges per pier, resulting in a total of 14 gates. The engineers have told me that the terminals have been uniquely designed to allow gates to readily be swapped from international to domestic at ease, depending on the demand that day. So being able to swap between the two, that's something that I think is very handy. Indeed, you've probably already noticed that there's only one terminal at this new airport. I personally think this is a good thing. No need for a shuttle between terminals. On that note, we headed back out and got a better look at the future airport terminal metro station. Not that they've done very much yet. I'm still not entirely convinced it'll be open by 2026, but fingers crossed. 
Anyways, it's actually quite close to the airport. Admittedly, it's not in the building itself, which I guess, you know, that is a little inconvenient, but it's only a hundred meters or so away, and it will be conveniently covered by a concourse walkway. And well, yeah, that's pretty much it. That brought our tour to an end. We thanked the engineers before heading back on the bus and back to the experience center, where we were graciously greeted with some afternoon tea. So bigger picture stuff that I missed now. The airport team really reaffirmed to us that the new Western Sydney airport isn't meant to just supplement Kingsford Smith, but really it's meant to actually one day replace it. Understandably, plenty are skeptical. I've seen plenty online who have very negative things to say about this airport. The drive to the new airport is still pretty much semi-rural. There's still nothing out there. But I will be fully honest, I'm fully confident that this can change. And the airport team is very confident about that too. Apparently, Amazon, Woolies and more companies have already agreed to start building warehouses near the new airport. For all of the new airport's problems, its isolation, its initial lack of adequate public transport connection, I really feel that the new airport's biggest selling point has to be its lack of curfew. This appeals so heavily, especially to cargo traffic, as it will allow them to fly goods at any time of the day, or more importantly, night. When a flight is running late, arriving into Sydney airport, it has to race to make that 11 p.m. curfew or else it will risk having to land somewhere else. That won't be a problem at the new Western Sydney airport. Anyways, I think that pretty much covers everything. I'm sure I've missed something. This was, it was just meant to be a really quick video updating you all on the airport and offering you a sneak peek inside. I'm sure you can tell it's not as super nicely polished as usual. I just didn't really have the time. Uh, as you would have seen in my last video, I'm going to Tasmania in a few days. So I've, you know, really got to hurry up to make this video. I'll probably make a more dedicated follow-up video on the new airport sometime next year because my main interest is in the airport surrounds and the city planning and development side of things, particularly that of the new Branfield city, which might I just say, it's yet to meaningfully start construction. TikTok government, TikTok. I made this video uh, before I went to Tassie, so whenever you're watching this, I will have been in Tassie for a week. I'm gonna set it to release in a week so that there's a bit of a gap between this video and the Pizza Ridge video. Anyways, my next video will be my Metro proposal video. Get excited, I am. I'm so excited for that one. Anyways, thank you for watching.